please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, Subdates 230126.7 We're preparing to dock at Spoon Central and are now rushing to ensure all spoons aren't being used inappropriately. The ones that are, shall then be keister stashed in Bork's asshole. It's the safest place for them. Hello everyone, welcome to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with the BBC. And first, obligatory, we must say this every time we talk about the BBC, defund the BBC. The BBC have certain rights to coverage of sporting events. The sporting event we're going to go to today is an FA Cup replay between Wolves and Liverpool. The reason why is because someone, and I will admit, whoever did this, you're a G, decided it was high time to knock the commentary guys off their pedestal. Time to really put them under pressure, really see what they're made of and how they handle a spanner. This spanner though, for me on Twitch, is 250 bits worth. It's a sound alert, not even a joke. I recognized it because of Twitch, for no other reason I swear down. Although I rate Alex sounds just like that. You can ask me how, I know this. It's an intimate secret. So what had happened, you ask? Well, I've got a short clip. It's not the greatest, but we have something else to show you afterwards. FA Cup winners only policy in the studio tonight. And I don't know who's making that noise, but so Alan Shearer is on the commentary gantry. Shortly after this masterpiece took place, Gary Lineker tweeted out, well, we found this tape to the back of the set. As sabotage goes, it is quite amusing. With Vodafone UK replying, getting a lot of requests asking how to get this as a ringtone today. <laughs> Credit where it's due though, when someone underneath had a picture of Del Boy and her cell phone, Vodafone replied to them with, how did you get this picture of our social media team? Now the practical joker, Apparently, is a YouTuber called Jarvo69, aka BMW Jarvo. They even have a whole video, 11 minutes of them setting this up, basically the phone call part, to make this happen. They even put out a video after, titled We Pranked Match of the Day with Naughty Sounds. And when it comes to comments covering this particular prank, I fully agree with Matthew Alderson, first entertaining show on the BBC in years. And if you are curious how this went down, I'm going to play a clip from Jarvo69's video. By all means, go check it out. It is linked down below. It is hilarious. Yes, yeah, they're totally ready, Tommy. No, they're not. Sorry, Castle. Uh, sorry, it would be if they won the game and they'd be seven points off. Uh, I think can win the game. I don't think there's enough experience in it. It's ring, can you hear it, Tommy? Yeah, surely. Uh, with an FA Cup winners only policy <laughs> in the <this year. laughs> <laughs> oh, and because this tickled me to no end, the BBC put out an apology on it. Something which Gary Lineker later told Newsnight he doesn't understand why they bothered. I think they should return the phone to Daniel Jarvis. It was his after all. I know it's obviously criminal and you shouldn't be doing things like that, but at the same time, it is amusing. Daniel Jarvis himself actually has a reputation as a bit of a prankster. For example, in 2021, he was arrested on suspicion of assault because he entered a cricket field, which then sparked a confrontation with Johnny Bairstow. Because he was wearing the full England cricket kit, no one realised he wasn't a player. He was banned from Lords, Headingley as well, for being on the field of play during the second and third tests against India in October 2021. He was escorted off the field at the Principality Stadium. I saw Ramstein there. After invading the pitch and lining up alongside New Zealand's rugby stars before their match with Wales. Three cricket invasions and also disrupting an NFL game. What a lad. Moving on from that, let's talk about tourism, nor notably Northern Wales. Tourists go there because there is one of the smallest houses in the United Kingdom there. It is 72 inches wide, 122 inches tall. It is dubbed the UK's smallest house and a tourist will pay £1.50 to visit that. In the grand scheme of what it is, I'll be honest, you're getting your money's worth for that. Whoever owns that house, 
he's probably making a nice little tidy sum. And if I can think of any small jokes I can insert into this, do expect them. Although based on the measurements of this, you know damn well it's far too tall for a dwarf and also a hobbit. Tourists though that had recently visited the house were not best impressed. Over the years, reviewers have been disappointed and have gone on to complain about a lack of facilities and expansive tours at the attraction in North Wales. Others have an issue with the limited number of people that the house can accommodate at any one time. Some saying they couldn't spend more than half an hour there. I'd like them to spend half an hour in the world's quietest room. You'll hear your internal organs moving. Half an hour is quite a lofty goal. Many though award it a single star because of an absence of kitchen or bathroom. There is totally a bathroom. It's called a chamber pot. And as far as the kitchen goes, get yourself throw a barbecue and bar. To those who complain about this tiny little property that's on a tourist attraction thingmajiggy doodah thing you paid to go on, are you really going to complain about the United Kingdom's smallest house? And then complain it's small. Let's move on to Fireball Whiskey, because they're involved in a little lol suit and I find it absolutely scrum diddly umptious. Fireball Whiskey is quite a popular beverage akin to that of Jack Daniel's Tennessee Fire, a cinnamon-based liqueur. Quite nice, I find. Well, the Tennessee Fire is I've not actually had Fireball, but I've heard good things about it. I personally do not consider it a whiskey for a whole number of reasons, the most important one being it's not one. So when I stumble across a lol suit concerning poor marketing, I have to sit back and go, how is anyone remotely surprised it was never a whiskey to begin with? So people buying the small bottles of Fireball at their local convenience store might be surprised to learn that they're not getting the same as the stuff that comes from the liquor store. And that difference is at the center of a lawsuit in which a customer is suing the maker of both beverages. Fireball Cinnamon, which is available at gas stations, grocery stores, and other places that are not permitted to sell liquor, is not the same as Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey. Fireball Cinnamon is a much smaller bottle. It is in fact a malt beverage flavored to taste like whiskey. It is sold in small bottles that usually go for 99 cents. I assume these are 5CL bottles. A recent lawsuit filed against the company that owns Fireball Whiskey claims that the convenience store version is misleading because the packaging is almost identical to its boozy older sibling and one would then have to read the very fine print on the bottle to know that it wasn't just a smaller version of the drink itself. Being quoted as saying the label misleads consumers into believing it is or contains distilled spirits. The lawsuit was brought forward by Anna Marquez, an Illinois woman who claimed she purchased the small bottles assuming they contained whiskey. You may as well just go and buy yourself some whiskey and do the cinnamon challenge on the side. At least then you're drinking something real and proper decent whiskey and then doing something stupid like cinnamon afterwards. Malt beverages are made by fermentation and are often categorized with beer and wine. Distilled spirits are typically more tightly regulated because people like to spoil the fun for everyone else. We call them dickheads. The lawsuit also takes issue with the way the malt beverage version's label describes its ingredients. For example, malt beverage with natural whiskey and other flavors and caramel color. The lawsuit says that this is a turn of phrase meant to trick consumers into thinking the drink contains whiskey as not just a whiskey flavoring. Shoppers will then in turn think the product is a malt beverage with added natural whiskey and other flavors. The filing also says you can't buy wine or any other hard liquor at any stores like this. So why is Fireball okay? This being a quote from a local news story. The lawsuit also claims the company violated state consumer fraud statutes and is seeking to cover anyone in Illinois, North Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, Alaska, Iowa, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kansas, Arizona, South Carolina, or Utah who purchased Fireball Cinnamon. It seeks unspecified statutory and punitive damages, although the filing does state that the amount would likely be over five million pounds over a tiny bottle of some poxy flavored drink that was cheekily marketed to resemble that of its larger and alcohol-loaded delicious counterpart, I assume. To help Anna Marquez push forward with this filing, this claim, she has hired Spencer Sheehan. Spencer Sheehan is actually renowned for taking class action lawsuits against food companies. For example, 
taking Kellogg's to court because the strawberry Pop-Tarts contained just as much apple and pear as they did strawberry, filed one against Frito-Lay for not using enough real lime juice in its Hint of Lime Tostitos, I don't know what those are, but it's there on the screen, and also for litigation over products that contain artificial vanilla and not the real thing. Fake vanilla can sod off. I stand with Xi'an in this one. <laughs> At time of recording, Fireball have not responded to anything concerning this because they will not during ongoing litigation. So we're going to move on to Pink Floyd. To our final subject, we go to an image on the screen. It is an album cover of one of the most famous albums ever produced by a band, little known band, called Pink Floyd. The album's been out for quite some time, in fact. It is the eighth studio album of Pink Floyd and was released in 1973. That is a long time ago, 50 years to be exact. On March the 1st, Pink Floyd will be celebrating their 50th anniversary of that album's release. So naturally, they updated their face cuck to include an anniversary also play on for the album cover itself. This is the image in question. It is quite fitting. It is quite distinctive and it does clearly look like the album cover slightly modernized and incorporating a 50 to symbolize quite an incredible achievement to be honest. Sadly for Pink Floyd though, it turns out there are many, many morons on this planet. So many morons, I can't cover all of them. But what I can do is go to a post that was shared because of the Facebook via Twitter, an image including comments. And for obvious reasons, I'm going to blank the names because I'm not that much of a dickhead. The first one, what's up with the rainbow? The second, lose the rainbow, you're making yourself look stupid, face palm emoji. What is that, Pink Floyd? What a disgrace. I'm assuming there's a question in there somewhere. From this moment, I don't listen this band. And finally, are you going woke with rainbows? Is there a straight flag? I want equal representation. Don't get me wrong, we should all be true to who we are, peace. Tell me you've never listened to them without telling me you've never listened to them. <laughs> I've never knowingly listened to Pink Floyd, but even I knew the album cover. I know it. I don't know any of the songs on it. I'm sure I would have heard of them. I know. I'm certain I've heard it somewhere. But I don't know them. I really don't. But I'm not this stupid. Additionally, doesn't the pride flag rainbow go horizontally, not vertically? How are you this stupid? Natural selection should have claimed all of you decades ago. So Styx Hexenhammer tweeted, Funny to watch woke leftists astroturf the concept of people criticizing Pink Floyd for their Dark Side of the Moon cover. Pro tip, the accounts complaining about mer LGBTQ on Boomer Book there are almost certainly all leftists or bots. Also tweeting out later after retweeting Necronaut who replied to that tweet by saying, Pink Floyd is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the release of Dark Side of the Moon, and a few Facebook accounts were complaining about them going woke due to the inclusion of the rainbow in their avatar. But clearly nobody remotely familiar with Pink Floyd doesn't know the album. So it could be a bot based on the writing format of those complaints. Could be. Or, just bear with me here folks, there could still be some idiots online. Maybe. I mean, we're 219 into a video series called The Exhibition of Stupid People. There could still be some left that I haven't gotten to yet. And I will get to all of them. We have the time. We have limited resources, but we have the time. To go back to those comments, what annoys me about them, what annoys me the most, is the fact that even if it's not true, and people didn't write those, sadly, there are plenty who do. And that's where the reductio ad absurdum comes into it. Whether legitimate or not, there is always going to be someone who doesn't see the point. And that's a damning statement of the current state of affairs really, isn't it?